To begin with, we need to break the myth that a fat diet raises bad cholesterol. Research carried out in the middle of 1950s fueled cardiology's error. Research has shown an association between fat consumption and increased cholesterol. To reach the conclusion, heart disease data in seven countries was evaluated. This study was widely criticized for numerous reasons. One of the main reasons is that the study's author, Ansel Keys, simple selected countries that would confirm his hypothesis that high fat consumption would cause cardiovascular disease. But Keyes didn't just do the research in seven nations. Look how curious. Ansel Keyes had researched 22 countries, but he deliberately chose only the seven that confirmed his theory that fat is harmful. Of this group of respondents, some countries showed high fat consumption and low levels of heart disease. Other places showed low fat consumption and high rates of heart disease. Only the seven he chose had the fat phobic theory confirmed. If we include data from all countries, there is no way to say that there is a relationship between fat and heart problems. This thesis, which was developed based on these two mistaken bases, became known as the diet heart hypothesis or lipid hypothesis. And it is she who proposed that fat, especially saturated fat and foods with cholesterol, cause heart disease. Even though it was just a hypothesis and not a fact, it gained strength. Do you know why? Because it could yield a lot of profit both for the food industry and the pharmaceutical industry. These industries managed to influence even government bodies and medical associations to start publicizing that saturated fats and cholesterol are harmful and are related to cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and stroke. From then on, the population began to be afraid of fat and animal products such as eggs, butter, meat and cheese. Even the dairy industry, which would lose out with the theory, found the solution in the skimmed and light versions of its products, earning even more. The pharmaceutical industry has started working on medicine to prevent and treat this terrible threat of high cholesterol and has found a gold mine. Because even with the population following the low fat and cholesterol recommendations, high cholesterol in people would continue to exist. Crazy, right? That's why statins, drugs produced to artificially lower cholesterol, are the biggest sellers in the history of the pharmaceutical industry. And so, what was just a hypothesis gained the status of scientific truth? Nutritious and tasty foods such as eggs, cheese, bacon, meat, butter, lard and coconut oil have been eliminated from many people's menus. But what does science really say? The World Health Organization did a study called Monitoring Trend and Determinants in Cardiovascular Disease. In it, he compared the cholesterol levels of different populations and the mortality rate from cardiovascular cause. In this study, we see populations such as the aborigines of Australia with very high rates of death from heart disease and the lowest cholesterol levels, while countries like Switzerland have one of the highest cholesterol levels in the world with very low cardiovascular mortality rates. In the United States, until 1920, when basically only saturated fat was consumed, heart disease was a heritage. In 1970, it was already responsible for 40% of death in the United States. In this 50 years period, 1920 to 1970, saturated fat consumption fell from 83% to 62%. Butter consumption fell from 80 kilograms to 1.8 kilograms per person per year, while the consumption of vegetable oils increased by 400% and sugar consumption increased by 60%. I'll repeat, the consumption of vegetable oils increased by 400% and the consumption of sugar increased by 60%. I can tell you here, vegetable oils, canola, sunflower, and soy, in partnership with sugar, are the real villains of heart attacks. But the entire planet, including the medical profession, prefers to blame cholesterol. Even with science, 
proving exactly the opposite. A survey carried out in 1990 showed that men who consumed butter had half the coronary risk compared to those who consumed margarine. Swedish studies published in 2004 revealed that butter consumption is negatively associated with cardiovascular disease. In other words, butter can protect the heart. In Indian population in the north consume seven times more saturated fats than those in the south. The population in the north has seven times less heart disease. Have you ever heard of the French paradox? It's called a paradox because French people consume a lot of fat and have a low rate of heart disease and obesity. It's not a paradox at all. French has a high consumption of saturated fats and has the lowest rate of cardiovascular disease in the West. These and other recent studies have shown a complete lack of connection between cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. Individuals with normal or low cholesterol develop plaques in the same way as those with high cholesterol. More than half, 60% of individuals with a heart attack have normal cholesterol levels. In fact, studies have revealed that low cholesterol pose a much greater cardiovascular risk than high cholesterol, especially in the elderly. A study by the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at Yale followed 997 elderly people for four years and revealed that those with low cholesterol have twice the cardiovascular mortality compared to those with high cholesterol. The Framingham studies revealed that high cholesterol levels have a protective effect in people over 60. But Dr. Diane, you yourself said that cholesterol is found in the plaques that clog the arteries. How can he be nice? It's true, but I didn't say that it clogs the arteries. Did you notice the difference? Cholesterol is a kind of police officer at the crime scene. Even though he's there, it doesn't mean he's a criminal. This recruitment occurs because, as I said, cholesterol has an antioxidant function. That is, it has the mission of cleaning up the mess and healing the wound. But when this dirt becomes excessive and cumulative, cholesterol is unable to fulfill its function. This plaque begins to narrow the blood passage and impair circulation. This plaque can also rupture and cause more inflammation and clots, which can result in a heart attack or stroke. And you blame cholesterol for the damage. But you understand the point. You have to worry about what caused these problems and not the cholesterol that will try to solve them. But I know you are thinking right now, but Dr. Diane, what about this story about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol? Does this really exist? Let's understand this. The acronyms LDL and HDL refer to lipoproteins, which are responsible for transporting cholesterol through the bloodstream. Both HDL and LDL play important roles in health. HDL, which became known as good cholesterol, transports cholesterol from tissues to the liver to be recycled or scratched. So, based on the villain cholesterol theory, HDL was considered beneficial as it removed the polis from the blood. LDL, which became known as bad cholesterol, transports cholesterol made in the liver to the rest of the body and various tissues. Because it carries cholesterol produced in the liver into the blood, LDL has become known as harmful. But it's not quite like that. Both are necessary, but it is mainly LDL cholesterol particles that accumulate in the arteries. LDL only becomes a problem when it becomes more sticky from the amount of atheroma plaque it is trying to resolve. This change in LDL is mainly due to excess sugar and carbohydrates, the action of free radical and excess inflammation. It is these altered LDL cholesterol particles along with triglycerides that can be deposited in the arteries. Therefore, you need to take care of what turns cholesterol into a stick substance. And I repeat, this has nothing to do with a strict diet. If the arteries are inflamed, Cholesterol levels will not make much difference. Whether high or low, the problem will happen. So much so that medications to lower cholesterol are prescribed to millions of people, but cardiovascular disease continues to be the main cause of death 
worldwide. Look at the paradox. Between 2002 and 2030, the use of statins in the United States practically doubled. The population's cholesterol levels fell, but deaths from cardiovascular disease have increased. Lowering cholesterol artificially without real need has adverse effects on the body. Side effects of statins include muscle pain, increased risk of cancer, heart problem, cognitive problems, learning, difficulties, memory impairment, and other disorders, diabetes, liver damage, and to close with a golden key, sexual dysfunctions. So, by now you have understood a lot about cholesterol and the misconception about it. And you already know that you don't need to fear or avoid foods rich in cholesterol or saturated fats, such as butter, eggs, bacon, and meat. So, thank you for being here. And don't forget to subscribe in our channel. Share this video for all the people that have afraid of fat food. And don't forget to click in like and in the bell. So, live with health, live with passion, and with God in your heart.